and welcome to Monkey World 3D's real-time terrain editing tutorial. I want to give you a quick overview first of what is terrain and what is not terrain. If you'll notice in the 3D window we have a what appears to be a terrain grid before us but in fact that's merely just a ground grid used for object placement and entity control. It does not have anything to do with terrain. If we go into the debug menu and click on the toggle ground control grid we can remove this artificial placement grid. Now you'll notice that it leaves us with nothing to see or do, so we're just going to re-enable it. It's merely just a helper for when you're placing entities. <coughs> now let's get into the terrain. Go into the activation menu and click on level terrain. This enables the level terrain submenus. We're going to select the first option of terrain. Click on file and new, and we're going to take the default format of 128 by 128. Click OK and a 128 by 128 grid map is displayed behind us. I'm going to click the close button and you'll notice that I have a terrain selector in the center of the screen. My terrain tab on the right has also changed to have terrain settings. I have tool settings, texture layers, and vegetation layers. We're going to focus on tool settings. Under tool settings we're going to go and click on the edit terrain button, the edit geometry radio dial, and we're going to leave the tool at raise. Very soon we'll get into the lower and flatten options. If you keep your eye on the center, we have the selector tool. As I move the radius slider, you'll notice that, that the diameter of that circle increases or decreases. I'm going to go ahead and move it all the way up to the top. If I move the brush strength slider, nothing seems to happen. However, watch what happens when I do a left mouse button click on the terrain. You'll notice that the hill was created very high. If I move the slider down to the very bottom and do the same click, it's a much smaller hill. In fact, you can barely see it. Let's go halvesies. The longer you hold the mouse button, the higher the hills are created. And these are very unrealistic looking hills, and in fact I'm very unpleased with the way this terrain is looking. So let's erase it. Go into the tool menu option and select lower. Now just start erasing your terrain. I'm going to leave, leave the default texture on because I believe that the grid shows these raises and lowerings much better. Now let's go down to flatten. There's a separate slider for the flatten height. As before, higher increases the height and a lower decreases it. Let's go ahead and start with a high. You'll notice that it creates plateaued circular hills. And if I decrease it, it lowers the blue circle down to the red. And it chops those hills by a certain degree and percentage. It also raises terrain that's lower than it to that height. Let's go ahead and get a very consistent plateau here in the center. One thing that can also be done with the flattened height is it can have its radius controlled as well. You'll notice that we now have a smaller diameter circle. I'm going to decrease the flattened height down to the very lowest, and I'm going to start going through here and creating what appears to be trenches. Gopher holes, I guess you could call them. Cut that off. And you can just start slicing your terrain up. Again, if I don't like any of this, I can go back under the lower option increase my radius to the desired height, increase the strength, and start erasing my terrain. Another interesting option with the flattened height, you notice this hill back here. It's got the plateaued height. I'm going to go under raise, leave my radius at a mid-size, my brush strength towards the low end, and I'm just going to start increasing its height map. It takes it from a very canned look and feel of terrain and allows you to sculpt around it in a more geometric and geographical look and feel. Again, if we wanted to increase the size of these hills and the realism of them, we just simply increase the radius and the brush strength. I tend to prefer the lower brush strength because it gives you much finer control over the clicking and the creating and sculpting of your hills. If I get to a point where I don't like any of my terrain at all and I want to remove it all together, I can simply go into the activation drop-down and select the terrain level terrain option again. This removes all of our hard work, so use it with care. It's all gone. Even if we re-enable, we've got to start all over from scratch.
so use it wisely. Have fun playing around with these options. I hope you enjoy the new uh, features of real-time terrain editing inside Monkey World 3D. Have a blast.